What's up, guys? Clean off this, uh, clean off the lens. Nolan, we're getting started in the back for the sales call. Yeah, sales, you want to let everybody know? Whoever's going to be on. We'll be in the back. Thank you. You want to call? Yeah, I'm about to be in the interview, but that's awesome, Don. You signed in the ad? Yeah, you see that? I knew you'd like that, huh? Tell your team. Sales coffee started checking my fucking on. I like the pinch stripe suit. Yeah? Yeah. It means I'm here for business. Ready to roll, Javon? You got Dalton in there? I was, I was just to ask, should I throw him in there? Yeah, all right. That's gonna get released today, so. Yeah, all right, he's ready to go. I'm gonna heat up my drink. I got a drink from Starbucks. I got a drink from Starbucks today. But I didn't drink it. I brought it to the office and I just started doing work and I just completely forgot to drink my drink. So we're gonna heat it up. We got a couple pictures coming in. Got a nice one for the office. We won't have to have this banner up anymore. What are you guys drinking? Anybody got some good coffee? I'm drinking a uh, Starbucks uh, uh, freaking gas station coffee, but it's still Starbucks. Starbucks gas station coffee? I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, like, like in a can. Oh, I got you. Yeah. I got you. I got you. Come on, Dalton. Join the party. Are you saying here? Well, I was using my phone just because the computer wasn't set up in here. So I'm gonna use. I'm gonna get a stand for it. And uh, I kind of want to. I don't know. What do you think? You guys want to use the board? Should I use the board? Yeah. 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 All right. I was better lighting. Better lighting. <laughs> Yeah, okay, I got you. All right, so I have a stand. I'm going to get the stand real quick. If you guys haven't seen the office, we put, uh, let me go back here. We put, um, put some plants up. So we got some plant life going now in the office. Got our Christmas tree. We got to turn the Christmas tree on. There we go. There we go. Morning. How's it going? Looking good. I'm getting uh, You got it looking sharp too, man. Yeah. So I got a stand for the phone, which I think everybody should have one of these. I have one here at the office. One of these. And pull it, turn it around. Boom. You guys see these things? Put the legs. You can put your phone right in it. So that's what we're going to do this morning. So I apologize if it's shaking around right now. Get it stable. Boom. All right. So we can set this up. And... Uh, Yep. 
Alright, so make sure you guys can't see that. All right, so pop pop quiz. What's in that? What's in my cup? Who can guess what I got? Watch it. How'd you know? Okay. <laughs> well, that was that wasn't even that wasn't even a good pop quiz at all. Man. <laughs> I thought I was gonna get everybody. I'm like, oh, nobody knows I'm drinking matcha. No, it's like matcha with peppermint mocha. Matcha with coconut milk. Okay. So. Uh, breakfast, breakfast. What's some good breakfast stuff? I, I, I've been trying to find good breakfast this year on a breakfast time because I was perking on my breakfast for the past few years. I've been, uh, Ellie's and Blinky. I've been, well, see, I've been told brainwashed that I need to eat like a whole bunch of eggs in the morning, and and uh, this could be good, like this could be good for somebody else, but for me, it's not good because uh, this year I found out I'm allergic to certain things, you know. So it's funny how you don't know what you don't know until you know it. Right. And you don't realize there could, you could have something right now that's holding you back or bothering you that you don't even realize it was there until it's gone. You know, it's like someone coming up to you and rubbing your back and like, dude, you're tight right here. Like, I didn't even know that. And they rub it out and you're like, wow, I didn't even realize that. You know what I'm saying? So for me, it was that with food. I was, I was eating the wrong foods. It was causing inflammation in my body. Inflammation. What does that even mean? Right. It was irritating certain parts of my body. Things were just weren't wasn't flowing like it should. So now that I removed those things that they told me I was allergic to, I do notice like, wow, I do kind of feel better. I didn't even realize I wasn't even feeling good. You know what I'm saying? So I recommend to get a uh, a test. Um, it's worth it. It was like 200 bucks or something. They took a prick little. I'm terrified of needles. If I could do it, you could do it. So they prick your finger. It was so easy. And it was, you know, you hear an allergy test, like, oh, I got to do like a hundred little things in your back. Like, it's not that. It's one little prick. Test your food allergies. I found out what I was allergic to. So, you know, um, uh, I can't eat eggs, can't eat um, milk, uh, coffee beans. I'm allergic to coffee beans, allergic to hazelnut. So imagine in the morning I'm waking up. And I'm and my 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 go to I just I would crack two eggs, throw them on a skillet, thing would fry itself up in two minutes, you know, and flip it right over. And I'd have toast, put the toast in, pop the toast out, throw the eggs on top of the toast. I got my protein, got my carbs. Then I would eat some fruit, you know, and there would be my sugar for the morning, and I was ready to go, you know. And that's what I did like every morning. I get my coffee, and I put milk and creamer and sugar in my coffee, sometimes hazelnut, which is like the absolute <laughs> worst, you know, of all. And then in the, and then at 10 o'clock, you know, I'd stop eating a snack. You know what they would tell you? Because I was doing a, a diet and it was telling you that you have to eat uh, um, almonds. So I'm eating almonds in the morning. Find out I'm allergic to almonds. <laughs> it's crazy. So anyways, I went on a mission this year to find better, you know, breakfast. And I'm like, not finding much. So, so I, I still just stopped eating breakfast. I just said, I'm just going to start fasting, you know, and I stopped, I started doing that. And that's my solution. Anytime, then what it did, it changed my mindset. So anytime that I'm hungry, anytime I'm hungry, I would start to get irritated. Like this is, this is bullshit. You know, I should be able to eat right now. I'm working all day, you know, and I would get mad. I would get hangry. You know, we all been there before. Right. And Damn. <laughs> you know, you guys feel me on that? Yeah. Um, so, so I, I learned to flip it. And now, like when you fast, you, you don't eat from eight o'clock at night until 12 o'clock the next day, right? So 16 hours off, no eating, eight hours on, right? And when you eat on, you, you can eat as much as you want, you know, but you should eat as much as you want clean. The thing is, is if people eat from, from the time they wake up until the time they go to bed, 
their uh, digestive system, which is a large part of your body, uh, they say your digestive tract is like long. I don't know how many feet long, but it's a long thing, right? So this whole long thing is constantly working. Think about this all day. From the time you wake up, you're putting it to work. And as soon as you go to bed, you're putting it to work. So while you're sleeping, guess what it's doing? Working. So you're not getting as good enough sleep either because it's constantly working. And then throughout the day, you want to know why you're tired? It's because your body's using its energy to digest all this food. So there's a lot of food being digested all the time. It's what the, what the, the, the thought process on fasting is. This could be wrong. It could be wrong, right? This is just the thought process. process. I'm just explaining you what that ideal is. And the other idea, though, is that, that most people, when they put food in, it's not good. So now you've got your digestive system working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and it's working over time because it's trying to digest all the bad food. It's trying to get all the bad out and only get the nutrients in, right? So if, if you don't feed it tons all day long and it gives it a chance to break and uh, cool off, right, regenerate, relax a little bit, and when you do put food in, if it's cleaner, healthier food, then it doesn't have to work as hard to do all that, you know? So I don't know. Um, so I'm like, all right, cool. I'll buy into that. <laughs> so now I don't, I don't I, sometimes I won't eat breakfast and I'll just tell myself I'm fasting. But sometimes throughout the day or throughout the mornings, I'll get hungry and I'll start to think, man, this is bullshit. I need to eat, you know, and I would get mad. And now that I learned about that, it's, it's crazy, but I, I, my mindset completely flipped. And, I, and when I start to get hungry, I, I actually go, pretty cool, I'm fasting. You know? So anytime I'm hungry now, I'm not hungry anymore, I'm just fasting. <laughs> How crazy is that? Man, I mean, that's a cool place to be because I don't want any point of my life to be frustrating. You know what I mean? I want to be able to take any negative situation and flip it into a positive. And this was a long way of me getting you to the point where how this happened for me. It was 37 years of figuring this out that you're not hungry. You're just fasting, bro. I'm like, cool. Good. Now I get like, now I'm like actually excited about it. I'm like, good. Give your, you know what? Your stomach probably needs a little bit of a break from digesting all that food. And then it burns a little bit, but that's good. It's a good burn. Instead of the bad burn, you're like, oh, it's burning. That's bad. I'm like, it's burning. It's good. Am I crazy now or what? Isn't that, isn't that cool though? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah, yeah. Right? So, so here's what I learned about breakfast is, is um, so for me, uh, there's uh, it's called chai seed pudding, chia seed pudding, chia oh, yeah. seed, not chai seed, chia seed pudding. So you can take coconut milk, which is, I learned, I'm going to give you a lot, a lot. Instead of taking, you could go to the store right now and buy coconut milk at Giant Eagle, or not Giant Eagle, or in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> like, Joel Osco. There we go. There we go. Whole Foods, you know, and they have it. It's refrigerated. It's in a big carton. You know, everyone sees coconut milk. Sometimes it's flavored, vanilla flavored coconut milk, right? Sometimes they do coconut cashew milk mixed. I've been trying. I've been mixing. What you do is you take chia seeds and you mix it with the, the coconut milk, right? And you mix it on up. And you literally just put it in the fridge overnight. And you wake up in the morning and it's like this nice pudding. But every time it was runny. But every time I would go to first watch it was nice and hard and it was like good good and i went to this other restaurant recently it was called bond Co coffee collective it's over by um the beach more over that way okay and maybe by skokie a little bit uh, so um theirs was real hard as well and i asked the guy i said i'm gonna find that i said i, I said how come yours is like nice and like like hard and every time i make it it's run he's like ah Try the canned coconut milk. So I did the other day and it worked perfectly. <laughs> so so you get the canned coconut milk, mix it with the chia seed, okay? No flavor to it at all. And if you, you gotta add a little bit of flavor, so you put a little bit of vanilla and just like a little bit of, uh, I use, uh, instead of syrup, what's that, mag mag magave or? Mag oh. Agave, yeah, I use agave syrup in it, agave syrup and a little bit of vanilla, that's it, right? And um, you can put some sugar if you want, like, teaspoon of sugar, mix it all up, let it sit overnight. And then in the morning, 
you, you have this pudding and then you mix with it whatever you want. So people will put, I, get, I, I recommend to put um, bananas, blueberries, and strawberries. You mix that up and that takes care of, you're not getting any of the stuff that I'm allergic to. You know, that's my solution to that, right? And then avocado toast has been a go-to for me, avocado toast. You know, but get, you have to get the real high grade, like grainy, like a, that, that Dave's bread, that real nice, you know, bread that's not all white bread, like with the, with the sugars and the preservatives and all that. You want to get the most natural bread, throw it in a toaster, take avocado, put it on the bread, and then, and then I get the nice bacon, um, which is, I brought it for the office, but Jess will make it for me at the house on a pan, but you can buy the microwave bacon that's already cooked, throw it in there for 30 seconds, put that on top of it with maybe some like peppers, what are those, uh, the red, red, crushed red peppers, oh, little yeah. crushed red peppers, um, yeah. you know, yeah. Himalayan sea salt if you want. And that's it. Yeah, that's, the, that's the breakfast. That's the breakfast we go to. Yeah. I don't really know any. That's pretty much all I can eat. You know, I don't really have any other. Oh, oatmeal. Oh, the. Uh, I can't. No, I'm, I'm kind of allergic to that stuff. Oatmeal, it sucks. That's my favorite breakfast. I would love oatmeal. Well, I can't eat that. I can't eat no bread. I can't eat bread. I'm allergic to sugar. Uh, bread, bread has sugar in it, it's it's uh, milk, yeah. milk, you know, all that right. stuff. So the other thing is that, what's that, a, 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 a sai or ka, how do you pronounce it? Acai. 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 acai, is that for real? Yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah so so acai, they make acai bowls. Yes. Yes. yes, I can eat that in the morning as well. That's pretty much the only three things I've found that I'm able to, to roll with. And if it's not that, it's not, you know. So, so anyways, um, uh, closing right what what i what i heard is is i hear us going over these options right i heard some people going over options and and when you're going over the options with the people you always want to let them know what they're you're gonna get obviously what it is but you have to let them know what this is going to do for you that's the phrase that pays guys people want to know what's this going to do for me right it's thirty thousand dollars a whole life that's one thing but this is going to guarantee to take care of your funeral and final arrangements so that your family will never have to worry about this ever again. That's what they want to know. So, so when I go over the benefits with you, I'll, I'll break them down how, how I kind of would do it. And, and, and the freedom of choice certificate. Holy cow, what a great tool that nobody has in their toolbox but us, right? So they call the right person for the job. Sometimes you can call the wrong person for the job. They say, I don't have the tools for the job. You know, we got the right tools for the job. We got the freedom of choice certificate. I used to say this is the best thing since sliced bread, you know, and um, I, I would just, I would, I love the freedom of choice certificate so much. Um, there's like, there's not many things that I love more than the freedom of choice certificate. Really. I like the Steelers, I like my family, but I love the freedom of choice. Certificate. Love it. Um, one of my agents a long time ago, her name was Faith, or I'm sorry, not Faith, it was Sky. <laughs> I was looking at Faith. Her name was Sky. Uh, Sky, she, she, um, she got me t-shirts made that had a picture of the freedom of choice certificate <laughs> with my signature. I'm like, how'd you get a freedom of choice certificate with my signature on it and a t-shirt made? Cause I was like, I mean, that's, I was, I'm telling you, I, I was all I would talk about when I was training. I mean, that was it. That was the number one thing. All I need really, all you really need guys is literally you need, um, you need a freedom of choice certificate, a rate book, uh, a pen and paper and life expectancy, and funeral inflation chart. That's all you pretty much need. That's all you pretty much need. Keep it simple. And then, and then you got to cause problems. You know, I saw a quote that said, don't sell the solution, sell the problem, right? They got to be sold that there's a freaking problem first. They got to be sold that there's a problem first. If they don't believe that it's a real true problem, they don't care about the solution. Right? The cool thing is you're not going into their house as a plumber, breaking their pipes and saying, you got broken pipes. You're not causing the problem, right? 
but you're walking in and the pipes are already broken. You know what you're doing? You're showing them and exposing them. There he is. El Presidente. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, okay. We got more. Yeah, you, you, you know how much these chairs cost? They're like 200 bucks a chair. Damn. Yeah. These chairs right here are probably 200 bucks each. So sit on these. Sit, sit the heck out of them. I don't even know how. I, what, what do you can say? Like, max out the sitting on these chairs. <laughs> I don't know how to say that. One, you know. So before we bring up the problem, we have a solution. We got to cause a problem, right? So, so I, you know, I, I don't like problem causers. You know, who likes the people who come into your life and cause problems, right? So, so this is one time though where you can be a, you know, we we want to be PPS, right? PPS means what? Um, Professional problem solver, right? You know, now this was, uh, I think it's like Snoop Dogg or something, or maybe it was Mac 10 or Ice Cube. You know, their professional problem solver was what? The revolver. The, the revolver. Oh, the revolver. Okay. Uh, we're not going to be walking into people's homes, okay? Being the professional right. problem solver <laughs> or a six piece shooter. All right. <laughs> Okay, but, but being a professional problem solver, that's what Tom Hopkins would say. He said, you wanna be a PPS, professional problem solver, okay? And before we can be the problem solver though, we have to be the problem causer, but we're not really gonna be problem causers because there's already a problem there. We just have to be uh, problem uh, identifiers, problem exposers problem exploiters. We have to exploit the problem to them and sell them on that this is a major problem. And you want to know how I could call this a major problem? It's by calling it a major problem. I say, Joe, Mary, right now, funeral and final expenses, people are passing away right now and leaving behind funeral and final arrangements to their family and the people that they love the most. This they found this to be a major problem and it's becoming a serious concern for all the members. You call stuff problems all, time, all the time. Like you see this window, this is a problem right here. People are like, what do you mean? I, you, all of a sudden people are like, well, they're, they're interested. You could call anything a problem, right? See these cups right here? These cups are made out of cardboard. That's a problem. What do you mean? Now they're going to tune into the YouTube show and they're going to watch the whole YouTube video for four minutes about why this is because I called it a problem. They want to find out what's the real problem. You know what I mean? So these are real problems, though, that, that are affecting. You could say you could don't even you don't have to tell them, them. like um, the major problems, serious concerns that are affecting all the members that were responsible for servicing all the members that were servicing right now. This is a huge problem and a major concern for them, funeral and final arrangements. So, you know, we bring up the problem, bring up the concern, and I, I, I could I could pretty much go into how, how to, you know, how, how to do all that. So we'll do. I'll show you how to do that um, using the tools to show them the problem, using the solution to fix it, and then how to bring up ABC form so that uh, so that you can explain it to where it tells them what this is gonna do for them, okay? And then we take it away and, and we'll, we'll go from there. So first thing is, is, you know, you go through your presentation, you go through the, the whole life versus term, go through all that stuff, right? And, uh, and let's just say that you're going to be uh, going straight into, you're going to sell this person some just freedom of choice, right? So you say, so Joe and Mary, one of the first problems and, and serious concerns right now is funeral and final arrangements. Joe and Mary, do you know how much average cost of a funeral is today? And now uh, it depends on if you played the video or not, right? So if you played the video, I'll just go back to them and say, if you could remember back from the video, the average cost today is between Ten and fifteen thousand dollars, whatever it says in that video. But the concern is not really what it costs today, but 
what it's going to cost us in the future because of inflation. So now let's say I didn't play the video for him. You don't need to play the video. You don't have to. So you just say, Joe and Mary, the first problem and serious concern that they found for members was funeral and final arrangements. Members were passing away and leaving behind funeral and final arrangement expenses onto the people that they love the most, their family. So what they found, Joe, is, is do you guys know how much the average funeral costs in America today, Joe, Mary? What do you guys think? And they'll say, whatever they say, they'll say 8,000. I'm like, yeah, yeah, right now it's pretty much between 10 and 15,000. So usually whatever they say, I always like, yeah, usually right now it's between 10 and 15,000. Just depends on what you get and where you get it, obviously. But the, the uh, cost of the funerals today is not really the concern. They're really concerned with what the cost of the funerals are going to be in the future. Um, because what they found is funerals are, are, are only getting more expensive with inflation. In fact, they did a study and they found that the average funeral 20 years from now is going to cost between $25,000 and $30,000. And then, Joe, we're responsible for servicing blue collar families. And what they did, they did a study and they found that the majority of the clients that were responsible for servicing do not have. Twenty or thirty thousand dollars set aside, and if they did have that money set aside, it definitely wasn't set aside to go to a funeral director. So what's happening is whenever our members pass away, their spouse, significant other, their children are now being responsible for taking care of all their funeral and final arrangements. And a lot of times what they're forced to do is they're forced to deplete all of their life savings in order to do so. And in fact, a lot of times they're even going into debt and having to borrow money just to cover these basic concerns. And what they found is with the funeral directors, well, if somebody passes away on a Monday, when are those people typically going to have the funeral for them? It's typically by probably Friday, right? So you have two or three days to get everything organized. And when does the funeral director want paid? What do you think they found with that, Joe, Mary? They say the funeral director wants paid half. They'll take at least half up front and the other half within 30 days. So now if you don't pay, uh, if it's not paid within those 30 days, they legally can charge families up to 22% interest on that balance. So what they found, though, is that the funeral director is, well, they're getting richer and richer and richer, and our families are getting poorer and poorer and poorer. So um, what else do I say? So if you think about it, Joe, you know, a funeral is almost like, a, it's pretty much like a wedding, because you, it, when you plan a funeral, you have to pretty much do the same thing. Think about, well, let's just go through a wedding. A wedding, you got you to gotta figure out what. Who's coming? Where's it going to be? Where's the food going to be at? Did I invite everybody? Um, what color are we wearing? Who's going to pay for all this? It's always the big one in the weddings, right? Well, well, the same thing you have to do for a funeral. You have to figure out who's coming. Where's it going to be? Uh, where's the flowers? Where's the food? Um, did I call everybody? Uh, and the big thing is who's going to pay for all this. But with the wedding, you have a year. Some people take two years to plan these things out. And it's, it's usually a pretty happy event. This, you have, not instead of a year or two, you have two or three days. And it's under the worst circumstances of our life. So, so what they did, Joe and Mary, is they developed this freedom of choice certificate for you and your family, for all the members. And what they did, they didn't develop this. Again. What they did is they set this freedom of choice certificate up. They set you up with this freedom of choice certificate. And what this is going to do for you, see that line? You're going to say it a bunch, okay? They, they, they set, what they did, they set you up and you could even say, they set all the members up and they set you up. They set you up with this freedom of choice certificate. What this is going to do for you, this is going to guarantee to take care of all of your funeral and final arrangements so that your family doesn't have to. So, Joe, what this is going to do for you, Joe, this is going to be a, a guaranteed permanent benefit that will be in place forever. So no matter what, 
wherever, however, whenever you pass away, this is going to be guaranteed to be in place to take care of all of your funeral and final arrangements. And I go like this, and I point right at Mary so that your family doesn't have to. This is going to be guaranteed to take care of all of your funeral and final arrangements so that your family doesn't have to, doesn't have to worry. So, so Mary, whenever Joe passes away, all you do is you take the certificate down to the funeral home, hand it over to the funeral director, and everything gets taken care of right there on the spot. Uh, you'll say to them after that, and I say, now, Mary, they call this the freedom of choice because this is going to allow you to have the freedom of choice to use this at any funeral home that you would like. Okay. Now, keep in mind, Joe, that um, what do I say? Uh, I say now, Joe, there'll be 30. I don't even put, I don't even put an amount on here right now. I go back to Joe. And I just, I think I just, I tell Joe, you know, just keep in mind, Joe, that, that you can quit, you can get fired, you can retire. This will always be in place. No one can ever take this away from you. So you can literally uh, move across country. You could be in Alaska, wherever, however, your family will have the certificate and you'll never have to worry about your, your, your funeral being burned to your, your family. Does that make sense, Joe? Okay, great. Now for you, Mary, what they did for you is they went ahead and they set you up with a freedom of choice certificate as well. What this is gonna do for you, Mary, see that? What this is gonna do for you? Mary is different than Joe. So just because I said all that stuff to Joe, I didn't say it to Mary. She doesn't feel all warm and fuzzy like Joe feels, right? So now we gotta get Mary. So I said, so Mary, what they did, they set you up with a freedom of choice certificate as well. What this is going to do for you is what, guys? Ensure that you're all your family. Uh, uh, guarantee. Uh, guarantee. Guarantee. What this is going to do for you, this is going to guarantee that your funeral and final expenses will never be a burden to your family ever again. That's the key line. What this is going to do for you is this is going to guarantee that your funeral and final expenses will never be a burden to your family ever again. Man, I just watched the movie the other day and it reminded me of something. I can't think of it. It's going to be on the tip of my tongue. I like to watch a lot of movies. That's my, my one thing. I'm a movie guy. All right. So, oh, man. What the heck was that? Yeah, like a funeral. No, it's, it, was a funny, it was a funny movie. I'm, I'm way off right now, so I'll just stay on before I go on. <laughs> yeah. um, so, so, so then you look at Mary and you tell her she's going to take care of her funeral process ever again, right? And then you go like this now, right? You say, so now, Joe, I'd imagine if something were to happen to Mary, you would be the one to take care of all the funeral and final arrangements. Is that correct? You say, of course. You say, now, Joe. Let's say that you weren't around. Let's say maybe you passed away first. See how I say this? This is an open conversation. You've got to have real conversations with people. So I say, let's say that you weren't around to take care of the funeral final range. Let's say maybe you passed away first, right? Who would take care of, of Mary's funeral final arrangements in that situation? Would it be one of the kids? Which one do you think would be the one that you would trust most to handle that? And I ask, sometimes the oldest isn't always the most responsible, right, Joe and Mary? And that's my, I always say that's my little thing, you know, just a little crack of a joke during a serious conversation. You know, I ask because they're not always, most, most of, not always the oldest, right? And I say, yeah, well, sometimes, like, come to think of it, you're right. It would definitely be my daughter, not my son, you know? Right? I say, okay, so it would be your daughter. And your daughter's name, was that Alice, right? Okay, so, so it would be Alice. Start using the daughter's name now, Okay. Okay, so it'd be Alice. So, so basically, um, what you would need to do, guys, is, is, is 
whenever I take off here today, I'm gonna leave you with a folder. It's going to have all of your important information in it. Now, I'm sure you guys probably have a, 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 a file drawer or somewhere where you keep all of your important documents for your family, right? I know that when I was little, my mom and dad pulled me aside and they said, hey, if anything ever happens to us, you come up to this drawer and everything you need's in here, right? If you guys have something like that, probably, right? Well, Joe and Mary, the folder that I'm going to leave with you, whenever I take off that, you're going to take that folder, you're going to put it in that drawer, okay? That's going to go with all of your important documents, all right? Now, inside there's going to be your certificates that I'm, we're going right now. Your, when your daughter comes home for Thanksgiving, when she comes home for the holidays, when she gets back from work later today, when she comes over later this week with the kids, whatever the situation may be, you tell her you're going to bring her up to the foul drawer and show her the certificate and let her know this is, this is where everything's at. So you're going to have to make sure you explain that to her, okay? But also, um, when she's listed as a beneficiary, uh, we'll also be able to get that out to her as well, okay? And I dropped that little line in there because later on, after I sell them, guess what I'm going to tell them I'm going to do? Oh, by the way, remember how you, it's very important for your daughter to know about this? Well, um, since you did enroll into the program, it is now my job and my professional responsibility to make sure that when you pass away, that this money gets paid out to your family. Most companies will sell you life insurance and, and that's it. We're going to make sure that this money gets paid out to your family. Last year alone, over a billion dollars went unclaimed in life insurance. Do you want to know why? Well, what that means is, is what, what does that mean? There was a, over a billion dollars of unclaimed life insurance. You know what that means, Joe and Mary? That means that people had life insurance and then they passed away and nobody claimed on the money. Why do you think that would happen, Joe and Mary? What do you think they say? It's you got it, 99.9% .9 of the time, that's the answer. It's a loaded question. The right people, you, the, the best salespeople, they, they get the right answers because they ask the right questions. So you gotta have questions built into your presentation as well. So I ask them, so why do you think that, Joe and Mary? Why would somebody have life insurance? Then they passed away, and then nobody claims on the money. Why do you think? And they always go, well, probably because they didn't know they had it. I say exactly that was the biggest problem and concern, right? That was one of the biggest problems and concerns that they had. Is so, so what we do is we make sure that you have your beneficiaries in place, Okay, which right now you listed your wife as the first beneficiary and you listed your uh, mom as the secondary beneficiary. Okay, but now what they need us to do is list a third and fourth beneficiary as well. And what, what, and then after I do that, I say, now my job is to make sure that your beneficiaries have the proper claim forms and they understand their responsibilities in being a beneficiary. Because God forbid, if something were to happen to you, it's going to be their responsibility to make sure they file a claim on this, okay? So there's all that verbiage. That's after that. Let's go back into the cell. That's, I just took us back into the after the cell. You guys know where we went on that? Yeah. Like we yeah. left where we were at in this presentation, and we went to after the cell, and I told you what I did because I dropped that little thing in there on, on to, to um, you know, uh, if you're gonna, if you're not gonna handle the funeral, your daughter's gonna handle it, right? So you're gonna have to show Alice where this is at, right? And um, and also uh, part of our service, I'll be able to make sure that she has the claim forms as well, too. You know, something. So then after I do that, you tell them. So Mary, you're not gonna, uh, Joe, you you passed or Mary passed away. Joe would handle it. Alice would handle it. So when we establish that. Why do you think it's important to establish that? For a lot of different reasons. Because first of all, we had them walking through a true real life scenario that they never thought about before. He never sat there and said, hmm, well, if she passed away, I'll handle her funeral. If I pass away, but that's not going to work. We both can't handle each other's funeral. 
So typically, who's going to pass away first? If, if me and my wife were the same age, who would pass away first? The husband, right? Males, life expectancy is what it is. Now, most married couples, most, not all, but most, typically is who's older, the husband or the wife? Husband's usually older. So when you add the fact that the husband's older and he's supposed to pass away first, there's a high chance that he is not going to be there for his wife, right? So we have to expose this that they don't think about and say, it's not, you got to figure this out. It's going to be somebody. It's going to be your daughter. Okay. Now he's thinking like, oh, it's going to be my daughter. I definitely don't want to leave this behind for my daughter, you know? So that puts more pressure on them to put coverage on her. You know, and then I do, I call it the mini folder clothes. I didn't sell nothing yet. They don't even know what it cost. I didn't even break down ABC for them yet, but I told them by the time I leave, I'm going to leave them with what? A folder. I got them walking through owning this product. I got them visualizing, taking the folder, walking upstairs, putting it in their file drawer. When their daughter comes home, walking her up to it, showing it to her in the file drawer, right? So I got them visualize owning their own certificate, having their folder. It's kind of like if you're a car salesman, you want to get your person to visualize owning that car. Well, the best way to do that is to what? Take it for a test drive, bro, right? They'll, some car companies will let you take it overnight. Tesla will let you keep it overnight. Tesla, you know that? You got to sign up to let you take it for a whole night. You can bring it back the next day. Because they know and they're confident in their product, too. You got to be pretty confident in your product to do that. Yeah, you take it home, he's not going to want to bring it back. Right? So you get them visualizing that. And especially if you get the wife to feel like she already owns it, she does not want to give it back. Like at the end, if he's like, ah, we're not doing it, she's going to almost get mad at him right he wants he don't want to be sleeping on the couch <laughs> you know so so you, you know all this plays a role into it um and and this is what a lot of people don't take the time to do because they're so busy trying to rush through or just rushing through for some reason i don't know what the reason is why we rush through instead of slowing it down taking the time on this stuff and you see how, like, I break it down, guys, you know, with the client. Um, so then after that, I'll say, so you're so now Joe and Mary, what they did is they set you up with uh, three different options, you can say, if you want to say that, you know, or what they did, Joe, is they set you up with a few options for your certificate, okay? Oh, so, no, I'm sorry. Now, here's what I say. We can't, we, the thing is, this is what I thought, but there's no way. I can give them options right now, right, guys? Because I don't know what their true need is, right? So I like to base everything upon some logical reasoning, you know? So the logical reasoning be, would be, so Joe and Mary, right now they found that funerals are going up with inflation. 10 years from now, 20 years from now, as we discussed, they're only getting more what? Expensive. So what they did is they did a study and they found that the average person who is 20 years old lives to be 85. If you're 35, you live to be 86. If you're 40, you live to be 87. And if you're 50, you live to be 88. You guys are 50, okay? So you're projected to live to be 88 and 86, whatever it says on the charts, right? So, so while you think about it, Joe, you're 50. So from 50 to 86 is how many more years? What is that? So, so I knew what the number was. You know, I knew the number before I even asked the damn question, right? But that's how you get the client to, to chime in and help, you know? So, so if you're 50 and you're going to 86, that's well, how many more years? What's that? 20, 30, 20 30? What, what, you know what I'm saying? No, like 30, 36. So that's 36 years from now. And then Mary, you will be about 30, 38 years from now, okay? So we go to charge more in 2020. 
right? So 2020 all the way up. Now let's flip it over. See this on this side? This is showing me um, right now the average cost of our funeral is between ten and fifteen thousand dollars. But if you look with inflation, you can see that the, the, the cost of funerals are doing what over time? They're only going up, right? So if you go down the chart and we go all the way over here, 38 years from now would put us at 2056, right? So in 2056, the average funeral is going to be, you know, $56,000 or whatever the number is, you know, $50,000, let's call it, you know? So, so Joe, what they did is they set up with three different options. You know, the first option, uh, option A, okay, and I would write them, write them down nice and neat. I would write them down um, to where A is a little bit bigger than B, and B is a little bit bigger than C, but nobody would ever notice. It has to be subconscious. You're the only person that really notices, right? They can't be like, are you using font 24, font 20, and font 12? Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Right? You don't want it to be that obvious. Like if you did it, it will be like 20, 19, 18. Nobody would really ever notice, but subconsciously it does play a role. You know, when A sitting up there big and fat, you know, and C is just a little bit not as cool. It's like little scrawny little C. It does play a little bit of a role in, in it. So keep that in mind when you're writing the stuff down for them. Um, and neatness does play a role too. You know, they're not really buying anything, right? They're, they're literally not buying. Not, you're not, they're not going to have no perfume. There's not a jacket. Like, it's not like they're going to be like, man, that, man, Joe, I'll tell you what, uh, that, that, that uh, life insurance policy, that freedom of choice looks just fabulous on your wife, man. She's just stunning <laughs> with that, you know? It's just that you're not going to walk around at Christmas. No one's going to compliment the people on it. They can't get in and drive it. There's no smell to it. It doesn't taste any good. So really, all they're buying, guys, is they're buying like numbers on a sheet of paper. Like that's visually, what are they buying? You know what I mean? So if you're gonna give them some numbers on a sheet of paper, at least try and make the numbers look visually nice, right? So try to just don't just scribble the stuff down you know, as best as possible. But see, I'll be in a home and I have a pen and paper and that's all I would have. I'd have my pen and paper. I said, hey, look, you're going to live to be this old. Here's how much a funeral is going to cost, right? The problem, here's the solution, freedom of choice certificate. Okay, so they're going to give you three options for your freedom of choice certificate. And I'd write them upside down on a sheet of paper. Option A, boom, boom, boom. Option B, option C. And I'd be writing them down upside down. So if I wasn't like that neat in my handwriting, they gave me a little bit of a pass because I was already cool because I was writing upside down. You know, like, is he writing upside down? You know? Gives you a little bit more credibility. Like, oh yeah, I do this all the time. I've been working with millions of clients. I see thousands of clients on a daily basis. You know, I do this all the time for people, right? I was 22 years old. And I, uh, when I was a financial advisor, the guy leaned over to me and he said, you want to know what, how, to, how to look like I do this all the time? He said, learn how to write upside down. And the guy was pretty successful and I didn't even think twice. I'm like, he says write upside down, I'll write upside down. And I learned how to do it. It was painful. It wasn't easy at all, you know? So anyways, um, but now we can do stuff nice on a computer. You can make a little bit more, all right? So, so like, you know, if I have option A, I hope this, this marker works pretty good. You know, option A, right? And I, I'll, let's just call it a hundred thousand. Something like that. I don't even know if they can see that. See how that would be looking? And then B. See all the zeros? People like zeros. Oh, do you, you got you could do that or you could do this. Do you want to buy a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred K? What looks sexier? <laughs> Zero. 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 See, see what I'm saying? You're getting a lot more. Zeros. <laughs> you know? So that's why you want to keep that in mind. And option C, you know. be 50,000, right? Uh, so now you say, so Joe, 
the first thing they did is they, they, they uh, the, Joe, the first option is option A. Option A, what this is going to do, this is gonna put $100,000 on your freedom of choice certificate. And what that's going to do for you, that's going to guarantee to take care of all of your funeral and final arrangements. Plus it's going to leave behind $50,000 in additional, uh, in, in, in a legacy for your family, okay? So, so this will take care of the. This will take care of your freedom of choice certificate plus a fifty thousand dollar legacy. Option B, what this will do, this will put seventy five thousand dollars on your freedom of choice certificate. Okay, and um, what this would do for you is is this would put. Uh, this would guarantee to take care of all of your funeral and final arrangements so that your family doesn't have to. And this will leave behind a $25,000 legacy for your family. And the way this would work, Mary, and you explain this to her once again. The way this would work, Mary, is you simply just walk down to the funeral home. And you ought to think it's going to be one of the worst days of your life, not even be able to think straight, okay? And all you do is you just hand this over to the, fu the, the funeral director. Now, the funeral, now, if you notice on the certificate, Mary, they, they, they always leave it blank, all right? Because if you walked into the funeral home and you told that funeral director, hey, I got 100,000, what, what can I get? What do you think that funeral director is probably gonna charge you? Probably call it charge you the whole 100,000, right? So you walk in, negotiate your best price. You know you have 100,000 on your certificate, but you're able to negotiate a $50,000 funeral, right? So what that's gonna do, that'll take care of the funeral for the 50,000, but it's also gonna still have another 50,000 on it. That 50,000 gets paid directly back to you and your family tax-free to wrap up all those other costs and leave behind a legacy. Just keep in mind, Mary, that's why they call it funeral and final arrangements because today there's not just basic funeral costs. There's always additional expenses, the funeral and final expenses. That's why they call it funeral and final expenses because there's not just funeral costs, but there's always these additional final expenses that get left behind for families that you just never could foresee. So this will leave behind enough to take care of all the funeral and it'll have uh, money for final expenses and legacy as well, okay? Now option B would put in place uh, enough to take care of your freedom of choice certificate so your funeral will be taken care of and guaranteed forever to never be a burden to your family. And th this is it, guys. This is the fireworks. Like, this is it. This is the fireworks. So if you, you got to get ready to go, you got to be zoned in. You got to be like, this is what you're selling them right here. This is it. So, so this is what they've been watching the whole show for is to find out what is this all going to do for me, you know? So this is going to be guaranteed to take care of all of your funeral and final arrangements for your family. And it's also going to still have $25,000 that will go left behind as a legacy for the family and help any additional final expenses. And option C is going to make sure that you have a $50,000 on your freedom of choice certificate. And what this is going to do for you, this is going to guarantee that your funeral and fire expenses will never be a burden to your family and, the, and you'll never have to worry about that ever again. So Joe and Mary, while you think about what's best for your family, I know that it's important for, I, I'll just say, while you think about what's best for your family, um, I, I gotta go over the cost next. I, I, gotta, I gotta throw up the cost. So I go over what, what is it? Now option A, what option A would do is, uh, so what option A would do is it would be, uh, $50 a week, okay, which is less than most people's cable or cell phone bill. Um, option B is going to be around $40 a week, and option C is around $30 a week, okay. All less than a cable bill, cell phone bill, really, I mean, less than a cup of coffee or some pizza. But at the end of the day, Joe and Mary, um, everybody always wants to try and qualify for the benefits. But unfortunately, not everyone can. So, so I need to make sure that you guys can even qualify first, okay? So you can follow along as I read through these questions here, okay? Um, the first question says on the screen there, you ever use, uh, what is it? 
D U I D W I A, whatever your questions are. Okay. Um, so, so, so you go right into the questions, you know, and then after I go through the questions with them, I go back and I, I get all their field, all the app as much as possible. And before I get their personal information, I say, so based upon the way you've answered these questions, as long as everything you're saying is correct, it seems like you guys are young and healthy enough to be able to qualify for. Now, let me ask you though, um, you know, Joe, you did say the last time you were at the doctor's uh, was, was within the past year, which is great, okay? Just a quick question on that. Uh, did they give you any, um, any tests that you were supposed to do that you didn't do yet? Uh, was there any uh, medications or any, di any, any prescriptions that you had to take that, 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 that you didn't take or anything like that? Okay, because it seems like you have a pretty clean bill on here, you know, you know and, and Mary, um, you know, whatever. And I, and I just do something to just do a takeaway if it's a clean bill, you know, but I'll ask him like one more question, right? Everything's on here, no prescriptions? Okay, and last time you said hey, there's no tests, there's no treatments, nothing at all, never hospitalized? Okay, I, I'm i sure you could probably remember if you were hospitalized, right? So you weren't? Okay, all right, perfect. Just need to make sure, because I'll tell you what, guys, based upon your questions um, and qualifications, you guys can actually qualify for option A right now, which means you can also qualify for B or C as well, uh, but you can qualify all the way up to option A. Am I just shut up? Let's go with option B. Option B. So option B, what that would do for you? Yeah. What, what, so option B, what that would do for you, that would guarantee to take care, Joe, of your funeral and final arrangements forever, but also you're going to have $25,000 set aside for your family. And also that's going to be for your wife as well. Okay. So now, um, Joe, we'll make sure today that we get your foot in the door with the benefits. We'll keep it comfortable for you. Um, so now I, I got, now I pull up the app again. I'll say, so what I got to do is got to get a lot of last bit of information here. Okay. I have some, I have some important information I need to go over with you. All right. Regarding your benefits and your life insurance. And we'll have you guys wrapped up, wrapped up here in, in no time. Right. So, so that's, that's, that's any questions? I have a question, Tommy. What if they say, uh, one question here first. What if they say that, uh, like after you're like, okay, so um, if you can qualify for option A, then you can qualify for B and C as well. And then you'd be quiet. What if uh, they like, don't know that it's time for them to pick an option? Yeah. 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 So, so if I be quiet and they be quiet, and they don't say anything, you know what you do? Don't say anything. Don't say anything again. That's the hard part, right? But then they're like confused. The client might not know that you're at your, you know, but they're going to say something first. They'll say something. And then, then you can react upon what they say, you know? Uh, Matt uh, Moriarty, he used to do, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, improv. And I loved hearing that. I'm like, he could be, he could probably do pretty well in this because you got to definitely be able to think on your feet. Okay. If you can't think on your feet and you're just a robot, I mean, you're probably going to have a tough time out there, you know? So, but um, one thing you could maybe say, let's say if it gets to the just like there's just like 10 minutes go by, right? And, and they, they think that you froze on the screen or something, you know, right? You know, I, I, let's see here. I say, so, you know, uh, it's probably it should be your option C. I say so. Keeping in mind, keeping in mind that this is a, a major problem and serious concern for your family, which option do you feel would be best for your family? Which option do you feel would be best for your family? And that's something you can say if you really wanted to. And then you could get, and then you know, go back and forth a little bit. And it depends on how how much of a rapport you built with them. But you know, they may have some rebuttals, and that's the reason you build the rapport is for the rebuttals. Rapport, rebuttals. You ain't gonna you ain't gonna handle the rebuttals if you don't got the rapport. They're not gonna, you know. So you, you know, um, 
it's that whole closing triangle. You guys know the closing triangle, you know what I'm saying? So the more rapport you build, the less closing you have to do at the end, you know, or the easier it's going to be to close them. But if you just go in there and you don't build no rapport at the end, you're going to be closing them left and right and all over the place. Um, go ahead, Matt Jans had a question though. Sorry there. Yeah. Um, so when you're going over the options, the ABC, um, obviously you're going over the freedom of choice. That's the main thing. Um, but also what I include in the chart is the paid up and the cash value. Um, so are you going into like, do we go into real more depth into the cash value and paid up or just kind of just say it and have that option on the screen? Nope. Nope. We are selling concept. We are selling the freedom of choice certificate in this situation. I'm selling a 50 year old, 55 year old. Okay. We're selling concept. I'm not selling life insurance. I'm not selling okay. life insurance. But for I'm going to let them know this is a whole life. This is a whole life. This is going to be here for your whole life. It's guaranteed to be here forever. Okay. Um, but, you know, that's the thing. We don't want to be selling life insurance. We want to be selling the concept of what this is going to do for you. That's what we're selling to them. We're not selling them a, a, a seventy-five thousand dollar whole life policy. Seventy-five thousand whole life policy is like a thing, you know. It's like, like, blah, blah, blah. Who wants a seventy-five thousand dollar whole life policy, right? It's not that cold, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? Seventy, like, who wants a seventy-five thousand dollar whole life policy, you know? I want to make sure my funeral and final expenses are never burdened to my family ever again. That's better concept the freedom of choice certificate guarantees that funeral and farm expenses are never burned to people's families ever again you know the key when you're doing this too is dropping words that are that are going to hit home with them you know that's why you say never burden ever again you know things guarantee for sure no matter what wherever whenever however forever now until forever, until you're 100 years old, you know, saying stuff like that is makes people feel more certain and assured, right? And more confident. So what you're talking about maybe is if you're having more of a life insurance conversation with someone and you're trying to show them the cash value, the paid up options and all that. Uh, and, and, and that's good too, you know, but, um, for today, though, we're, we're talking about causing that problem. The problem is funeral and final arrangements, being masters of doing that and selling the shit out of this. I mean, we got to go in, go in, this, go, go in, go in on them. You know what I mean? Go in on, man, funeral and final arrangements are this major problem, serious concern. People are passing away, leaving behind funeral fire arrangements for their family. It's costing right now ten to $15,000. And most people don't have ten to fifteen. They're going into debt, depleting their savings, borrowing money, right? That's their whole life savings going to a funeral director. Now funeral directors get richer and richer and richer. Our families are getting poor and poor. This is a major problem, you know? And it's happening at one of the worst times in their life. Their, their best friend just passed away. And now they're losing all their life savings. They have three days to do it. There's a, it's like a wedding. I mean, you got to do a wedding, all this stuff for a wedding and people two, you got three days, but now it's a funeral. So, I mean, do you guys feel me on it? You got to go in on it. You got to go in and cause that problem, you know, and reveal it and show them like today, somebody's going through this shit. Like right now, somebody's going through this shit. They're at home, like stressing the hell out, not know what the hell is going to happen, how it's going to happen. And they're going through it. And they got to have the shit done by Friday. And today's Tuesday. Someone passed away last night. And they don't have no life insurance. That's true, right? So that's where you go to mentally before you even start going there verbally with these people. You got her mentally and like some this shit ain't happened not under my watch. This shit ain't happened under my watch. Okay. And if they ain't buying, they're gonna hear it, they're gonna be knowing it. By the end of this whole thing, they're gonna know, like, you got leaky pipes, bro. I'm telling you, if your basement's flooded, don't come to me. I told you a hundred times, like, what do you want me to do? I took you down and I showed you the leak. There's a major problem, bro. You know, like, Tommy, get out of my house. I'm like, I'm out, but just on my way out, just know, okay, you're going to have, that's how it got to be. You feel me? 
Like I've been told, like the people are telling me like, okay, we're done. We're done. I, I can't do it. Listen, please don't mistake my passion for pushiness. Okay. I've seen this happen before, you know, blah, 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 blah. And then I'll tell them stories because stories sell. Stories sell. If somebody wants to give you pushback, like, ah, let me tell you a story about my grandpa. Then you want to give me some pushback, bub? <laughs> and he's like, oh, shit. Right? Oh, you want to buy, you don't want to buy uh, accidental coverage? Let me tell you about the guy who died with accidental coverage without it. Let me tell you about the guy who had $30,000 of whole life and that's all he had. Let me tell you that story. You don't want to be like him, do you? Right? I have, I had a friend who was doing drugs, right? And if, if he would keep doing these drugs, he's going to die. He's doing heroin. Okay. Heroin not good. Okay. So, so I had to tell this person a story about another person that I knew that did it and died, right? And after I told him that, it made sense to him because it was a similar situation, very similar situation, very similar situation, right? So like, like I had a guy who had a situation happen, he got on the stuff and then passed away, right? Now I know this other guy and it's the same situation. So I tell him the story. I'm like, this guy's just like you, right? Just like you. And if you don't get cleaned up, you're going to end up just like him. And because I kept it real with this dude, I didn't want to have this conversation with people. That's hard. That's a hard talk. You guys know that? You think it's easier or hard talk to say that to people, your friends. I don't even, I wasn't even that friends with this person. I wasn't even that much friends with him. But I cared enough to go out of my way to have a hard conversation with him and tell him the story about this guy. And guess what that story did? It sold him and, and he got himself fixed up, right? The story made the sale. So, so you meet with a family who owns a farm, right? And then, and they think they're all good because they got all this land, right? But you know that your best friend growing up owned a farm. And when they passed and the dad passed away, when he was in high school, right? So you saw your boy lose his dad in high school and then his mom had to sell the farm, but she couldn't sell the farm. Want to know why? Because there's a freaking farm. People don't buy farms for 300 acres or 500 acres. So now the mom's stuck with this farm and all this uh, real estate taxes, right? And if you don't pay your real estate taxes, who takes your farm then? The, bank. the government, not the freaking bank. The bank takes your farm if you don't pay your mortgage. The government takes your farm if you don't pay your real estate taxes. That's called a sheriff's sale. Right? So now you found out that and he had to sell the farm, the mom, the whole family goes because of the dad passed away, didn't have life insurance, right? So that story, you meet with the family, they have a farm, they think they're all good, they think they're Gucci, you tell them. Hey, let me tell you this story about someone who is just like you. That's what sells. So there's a website called lifehappens.org. On that website, there are videos of people giving testimonies of their experiences with life insurance. If you just want to get fired up for today, watch a couple of those videos. It'll 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 inspire you to make sure you do your job fully, inside and out. Because uh, there's videos of people who have life insurance and they passed away, and their families telling how much it changed everything for them, how it saved the day, and they're thanking their agent. There's videos on there where people didn't have life insurance and they passed away and it's horror stories. There's people on there where, where people had life insurance, then they let the policy lapse, then they passed away and there's stories like that on there, right? So you have a client, sign them up six months ago, knucklehead cancels, you can't get through to them, you, you, you better tell them a story. Better tell them that story. Better tell them the story. The story's gonna sell him to get that back on, right? Call his mom on. I will call his mom. 
Think about whoever their beneficiary is, call their beneficiary on them. Hey, you know that Joe had you listed for his life insurance and now he canceled it. That was for his funeral. So you're going to have to take care of the funeral now. You don't have that. His mom's going to be like, his wife, whoever, whoever the beneficiary is going to call him up. You know, dad, you're a life insurance agent. Call me when you cancel. What are you doing, dad? I'm not paying for the shit. Right? There's a lot of, but let's say none of that works. Make them watch the video from lifehappens.org of, of a video of a person who's like, yeah, we had life insurance and then my husband got sick, so we just canceled it and then he died. That's what people do. The person gets sick, goes to the hospital, they can't afford their bills, and that's when they cancel their life insurance. I'm telling you, that's what people think. So that's one of the stories on there, actually. It's a real story. So if you get on there, you'll see stories, and you can use those as your own stories. Steal them. That guy, that was your uncle, tell him. The guy, you watched a video about a, a guy who, who um, uh, was, was, was a single dad right? Single dad. And, and then, and, and then he passed away and his kids, you know, had what you could say, you know, my cousin, he was a single dad. And here's what happened. You could tell them that story to say it was your cousin or one of your best clients or your friend or your uncle, who cares? Or you could pull up the video and watch it with them. It's a two minute clip, one minute clip, real quick ones. If you know videos and stories, you could find out this guy is, is Asian and you go on the thing and you're like, there's this Asian family, right? And they tell their whole story. It reminds me of this Asian family. You know what? Let me show you this. And you showed them something that reminds, it's the same. You see what I'm saying? Right? Same. Let, let's say, let, let's say it was, uh, you're, 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 you're inner city. You're in, you're in the hood, right? There's plenty of videos on there of people who are in the hood. And you can just play in that video. Like, I never thought I'd get life insurance. This guy came over and told it to me. I best thing I ever did. This is what happened over here. You know, blah, 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 blah. And 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 that testimony sells. I'm telling you, those testimonies. So get familiar with it, get familiar with the videos, all that stuff. Uh, so you can use that um, to your advantage. So lifehappens.org. I'm pretty sure it's still up and running. Um, when I was out there in the field, I was always watching those videos, getting familiar with it. Cause I wanted to have them like at the tip of my, actually you want to know what I did. I don't know if I still have this, but I went through lifehappens.org. Okay. And then I copied the link for each video and I had it as a, as a note in my phone. And it said, it literally said like, you know, single mom in the ghetto, uh, owned a farm, um, business owner, uh, normal family you know, blah, 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 like, like single mom, um, young teenage mom, like videos. So if I met with a family with a young teenage mom, like, you know what guys, I just saw this video. It just reminds me of, 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 of your situation a little bit. Let's watch this one together. And I would show them the video and it wasn't me, you know, it was so powerful. You know, so that's something I did when I was out there. I don't know if I still have it. I'll look through my notes and everything, you know, but you could go ahead and, you know, use it to your, to, to whatever you can use it for, you know? So, but um, any other questions? Always have some coffee, man. You just tell them, like, dude, I mean, you reduce them down to 70 bucks a month. You tell them, like, it's less than a cup of Starbucks, you know? So this was selling the freedom of choice and the funeral. And um, are you not going over the mortgage, loss of income? And then... No, it's today. Today was just that. Okay. Yeah. I could do income next and I could do mortgage. Yeah. I mean, I could, I could really. But like, would you go into a set and just sell them on the freedom of choice like this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Do you actually write that right there? Like FOC plus 50 grand legacy? Do you actually write that? Yeah. Yeah. If I put it right on a sheet of paper, they're for There's like room or something. Yeah. You always base the premium on like per week. Oh, yeah. 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 100%. Really? Yeah. Okay. 50 bucks a week or 200 a month? What do you like? Question, Tommy. Yeah, you ever have anyone? I always, always weekly. Like when you're filling out the application and like the summary sheet shows the monthly premiums because they ever like. Yeah. Oh, no, no, because like, and then if they ever question, like, what? Somebody actually did. They're, they're like, 
well, what is it monthly? You keep showing it weekly. And I'm like, oh, also we, um, all of our members that we work with, that they, they all get paid weekly. So they have it set up weekly like that. All of our members, we meet with, they all get paid weekly. So it's all set up on a weekly, but they handle it monthly for us electronically through our banking system. Verbiage guys, they handle it once a month electronically through our banking system. They don't take the money out of your account mm -hmm. once a month. They don't do that, do they? Do they take the money out of our client? They don't take no money. They don't, they don't ever say that shit, right? They take the money once a month, right? They'll pull the money. They'll, they'll draft your account. None of that shit sounds good at all. No way, right? They handle it once a month electronically through our banking system. And it's nice and easy uh, because you get to pick whichever day of the month you like that handled for as well. Now, Joe, which banking system do you use? Okay, great. I believe we work with them, so that's perfect. Straight up. <laughs> so, so that's probably that helped maybe answer your question, right? Yeah. Any other questions? Any tips? This is something small because I have I have an appointment today, but he used to be a funeral director. He retired. So any tips on trying to sell him to give him a choice? Oh, he should love it. Yeah. My whole thing would have been like, you should have had this going on in your funeral home, you know? Right? Think about how easy it would be for all your members, all, all the people that just walk in with this. You know, I meet with funeral directors. My whole thing is like, we should just, you should have this for your funeral or take care of everything, you know? So they don't have to worry about borrowing money, borrowing money, loaning money out to people and stuff. So, yeah, my mindset would be not even, you know, like, it would be bigger, thinking way bigger than just trying to sell this guy. Like, he used to be a funeral director. He probably knows a whole bunch of other funeral directors. We got to get this out to, to, to him and all his friends. So selling him is nothing, right? Same thing with your clients. When you're going to the client, if you're worried about just selling that client, you're thinking like too small. You got to be going in there thinking, not only am I going to sell this client, but they're going to give me 10 other people that I'm going to sell as well. That's why we're going in here today. And then selling that client's like nothing because you're really, you're really there to get 10 other people. Like I'm not here. You guys can get the coverage. Sure. We'll see if you guys can qualify, but I got to get this out of 10 other people that you guys know as well. Right. You know, Using those two thousand dollar certificates can be huge for us, you know. Um, I'd be all over that, man. I'd be all over that. Did you talk about that two thousand dollar certificate at all today? No. Okay. <laughs> um, and and I'm not the best at it, so literally I would just be out there just running and gunning with it right now, guys. I'd just be running and gunning. I'd be asking people getting the best advice from everybody in the company and all that, get myself a good script before I went out there, but I'd be running and gun. I'd be just figuring it out myself, feeling it out, but give me about a week or two weeks in the field. Give me about 10 presentations, good 15 presentations, 20 presentations. I'll have a pretty good system down by then. It ain't going to take me that long to figure out how to, how to get people free life insurance. Right. <laughs> Should it take us that long to figure out how to give people free life insurance, you know, and do it efficiently, effectively. But we didn't do that in PA, so I never had the opportunity to do it. So we got crushed. We crushed it with referrals out there, man. We crushed referrals. Um, and we didn't even have that available, you know. So uh, so we definitely should be able to maximize and capitalize on, on, on that. So, um, yeah, good stuff today, guys. Yeah, I'm sure yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go get it. Let's go get it, guys. Big week this week. Thanks.